it is a burst of energy it is extraordinary because i think you know every school you know especially wonderful schools like in venture are you know really just bastions of hope uh you know an excitement and fun and a kind of optimism uh about life as young people should be but it's infectious because you know you sort of pick up on that i'm like luxuriating in just this kind of infectious sense of hope and optimism uh wonderful to be back it's interesting right because actually children are much wiser than you think they are like this has been my experience with them um so they're really smart um and the only thing i avoid doing is talking down to them like you have a conversation with an equal maybe an equal who hasn't seen perhaps as much of the world as 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 you have perhaps um but really one i think it's a conversation of equals um to i do think and you are absolutely right it is a plethora of options um verging on these options being so easy today in a way that they weren't for you or me you know 20 years ago you did not have this access to information infrastructure resources books you know uh computers um so what do you do with all of these choices especially juxtaposed with a reality outside that is quite different and that reality becomes relevant why i mean this is the whole thing right how is that reality outside the reality that defines a vast part of this country how is that reality relevant to you or me or our children um uh, or the circles we inhabit it's very relevant because at the end of the day you build your professional self in that reality and you can decide how you want to engage it you can decide that you don't want to engage it and many of my peers from college live abroad and that's fine power to them you know i've i've done it it's wonderful it's a gentler life it isn't as interesting a life right so then how do you navigate this reality and how much of that reality defines you and how much of you you feel is outside of that so i think you know there are two traits uh um, which i just find are old fashioned traits and you don't find them in plenty today either in our leaders or in i suspect our children one is this idea of introspection because if you introspect if you think about what your day has been if you think about what your year has been if you think about what this interaction is then you kind of catch yourself you find the good you find the bad and introspection and humility which means that you say i have made a mistake you know and i intend to do things differently um this idea of having humility of being introspective i think they're wonderful traits because it's their traits that are long gone um uh, there's this lovely exchange between i mean you know i love these examples because they're so rare there's a lovely exchange between nehru and patel uh india's become free and you know patel comes from a very sodar patel comes from a very different ideological background uh, and you know here you have nehru who's the quintessential liberal and patel and nehru disagree and patel resigns from government and nehru says to him you cannot you know uh um, and patel says to him but jawahar you know it's more important for you to stay and be part of this process of freedom and nation building because your vision is more important than mine i have thought about that but this idea that you can introspect you can evaluate you can have humility even vis-a-vis -vis your opponents is such an old world idea and how is it that we teach this in classrooms how do we tell young our young privileged children to have humility to introspect to say i'm sorry how do we tell young boys about the privilege they have vis-a-vis -vis young girls in this country how do we teach them to be more sensitive citizens to their co-citizens um how do we teach young girls to be brave in a country that is not particularly kind to women um so how how do you engage issues of young people or handicapped um how do you get children to think about a reality that is different from theirs that's the challenge for schools today i 
I think that idea of taking time off in a world which is constantly about immediate success, immediate gratification, is just even parents don't let their children do this, you know. So one, I have taken time off. Two, I have seen some bits of the world. I think of myself as being comfortable in different contexts. I think that has made a difference because when you go and see different contexts, different countries, you have an ability to locate yours. You know, I think that's quite important. But three, and I think this is really important because you know we live in a country where there is tremendous parental pressure on kids to succeed. And I think for young people, the ticker has to be your own. It cannot be about external milestones. My ticker is mine. You know, I do the cases that I want to do, uh, whichever way they are, for profit, not for profit, doesn't matter. But they're the cases that I want to do. I am not invested in external markers in the profession. Um, I think that gives you time to breathe and I think it keeps you honest. This is, this is the other thing, you know, uh, how much of your own integrity are you going to lose to be part of the rat race? And I work hard, I work seven days a week, but that's not even the point, right? The point is the ticker has to be your own. I write in a profession which hardly reads, right? So, but it helps you reflect. You have to in your life make time to reflect because you know there are all these wonderful studies done by healthcare professionals and by psychologists i think harvard's got a big study out recently that you know what accounts for happiness right this is like this is the core question for all of us right uh, and as as children also you know we put them on professional tracks and so on and so forth i met young people who want to be lawyers and doctors and spoken word artists and so on and so forth but the question really is what is the ultimate quest for life you know our friend Sid Buddha said the same thing what is that quest and if the quest is happiness then how do you get there according to Harvard study people who reflect and assess and analyze their paths are much more likely to be happy than those who don't so I think the idea of the ticker being yours and internal is a good one because it takes the pressure off having to conform. And I'm not saying that your dream will always be perfect every day. It won't. Right? And I think this is something that young people have to understand. You will be in your dream job, living your dream life, doing the things you've always dreamt of doing but you will still have bad days and you will have good days you will have bad slumps and you will have peaks but i think the point is to keep remembering why you made that choice so every once in a while you know we'll finish a long case would have litigated it for years because that's our broken judicial system and justice system and suddenly you will have this wonderful order which brings justice to so many people's lives and I remember why I went to law school. And I think to be part of something like that, that's something that with some great regularity reminds you of why you made choices and certain kinds of choices. I think that's the aspiration that is worth chasing down. So for me, this idea that, you know, I will still find inspiration uh, at my workplace. Um, I will still find that brave judge, I will still find that feisty colleague, I will still find that client who will not back down, um, is a treat. Um, in perhaps a country where today we don't believe in happy endings, the court system and the justice system, every once in a while, rarely, but will still make for that happy ending. And that is special. So that makes up for the traffic jams, the poor judges, the corruption that you see, the heat in which you work because Delhi is a very hot city, uh, whiny clients, you know, expensive law books uh, and, and really a system that like most of our systems is broken, is overworked, overburdened, uh, good people are underpaid uh, but it makes up for it. I think a sense of humor, very important. If you cannot laugh at the situations and predicaments you're in, it's not gonna happen for you. It's just not. Humor is an essential for life, very important. Uh, we've discussed it, introspection and humility. 
And then thirdly, just hard work. You know, I would say to every young person out there, dude, you got to work hard. Because only if you work hard will you have choices. And those choices make for different things. It means opportunities. It means financial wealth. It means the opportunity to walk away from dishonest situations because you have craft and you will always get more work. Um, it means that by working hard, you will also be able to do many things uh, that craft will bring you. Travel, see the world, meet different people. Um, so definitely hard work. I think incredibly, incredibly important. And I think fourthly, very, very important, you must be able to take people along with you. Success is not a solitary pursuit. Finding your dreams is not a solitary pursuit. It is about taking people with you. I am constantly inspired by the young colleagues who work with me. I have to take them with me because at the end of the day, change doesn't come with one person. It comes when waves of young people believe that things have to be different. You know, so I think that those, to me, these are the things that I've learned. Uh, and I'm open, I'm sure there's lots of other stuff out there.